What is up guys, Rick Hackus here going over the Overpower 8 Ogre in Borderlands 2. So my build for this, uh, I'm kind of again a rocket Axton with a huge emphasis on gun damage. Like I think I have almost 100% static gun damage increase. So I am just full bore every skill I have that increases gun damage. I have spec'd it out so I am very very much like just kind of a weapons uh, Axton class. Now this is going to allow me to use a weapon like the Ogre extremely effectively you know, so I didn't level up, I decided to ignore the assault rifle magazine size increase. Now, although that is very effective for certain assault rifles, I found that since the Ogre already has such a large magazine at like, I think mine's 81 or something, that I just don't really need um, that to be increased, especially since I have like uh, plus 80% reload, so I reload extremely fast. Now, the one thing about the Ogre is that you have to be shooting it to get it to shoot fast like it starts off slow and gets faster and faster and faster so reloading is going to stop you in the middle of that whereas if you had as large of magazine as possible um, you're going to be able to keep up the maximum like high rotation damage uh, sorry high rotation rate of fire for as long as possible however again I would rather re uh, level up something that increases gun damage rather than magazine size and I really had no problems with the, the magazine size being too short, so I just kind of left it as it was. Now you'll see this gun absolutely shreds people. Like I take it to the beatdown and it just completely shreds ultimate badasses and everything. Now that being said, this isn't going to be the greatest gun in the world against like extreme bosses like raid bosses. I, I wouldn't pick this to fight Pyro Pete. Like I would still sick with the Sandhog B combination is much, much more effective. It's just kind of this gun, however, versus normal enemies, even like semi-boss enemies, um, something like, uh, like bl that kind of enemies that uh, are quest reward enemies. Rather than raid boss enemies, I can see this being very effective, but it really shines just kind of against normal enemies. And then if there is an ultimate badass thrown in the mix, you can absolutely take care of them, no problem in this gun, uh, with this gun. One of the huge advantages of using the Ogre is that it always spawns with explosive damage. It is a Torg weapon, so it's always going to shoot gyro jets. And that means that you're basically going to have no problems versing different kind of elemental enemies. Like uh, if you're using a shock weapon and a shock ultimate badass skag spawns, you may have a problem. With this, you're almost never going to en encounter an enemy that um, spawns with explosive resistance damage, so you can take on most enemies. However, the f there is a few problems with this gun. One, it does rely a lot on slag. Now, it can handle itself without slag, no problem. But it does have a huge reliance on slag. I'm not going to like deduct it too much for that because basically everything in Ultimate Vault Hunter mode and especially the overpower levels does have a huge reliance on slag. So I can't really be too harsh on this gun for also having a huge reliance on slag. But yeah, if you want to kill enemies with any sort of like decent uh, quickness, you're going to have to slag them first. Again, you can kill, still deal with basic enemies no problem like get up in emergency scenario if you get downed um, with... Uh, no slag, but you would really really prefer slag so definitely you know put those magic missiles on it and maybe put the antagonist shield on or something to be able to slag as many animal uh, enemies as possible another kind of downside of this gun is that it, its recoil isn't great uh, you're going to, I, I like especially when it starts to shoot fast aiming down sights and shooting at an enemy it is hard to keep that enemy in target especially when they're often uh, moving so you do end up want to get close with this gun like it tends to bring you in close so you're gonna want to try to get as close as possible if you do aim down sights you can keep that on an enemy uh, much much easier and of course hip firing this gun is extremely effective that being said, when you're anytime you're in close with enemies in Ultimate Vault Hunter mode, that is a recipe for disaster. So be prepared to go down a lot. Like you'll see, I do get downed with some decency because I'm playing really, really close into with these enemies. But then I get up, no problem. And that's again another huge advantage of this gun is it spits out so much damage that if you're down, as long as you're in close in the fray, if there's an enemy near you when you go down, you'll have no problem getting up with the ogre. So overall, this gun. Great performing gun in Overpower 8. Extremely good. That being said, it does have uh, a little bit of a... I mean, it's not necessarily very good versus raid bosses in a raid boss scenario. But versus normal enemies, it shines. The Overpower rating for this gun 
is an 8.5 out of 10. Its reliance on slag and the decent amount of recoil make it not quite a 9, but it is a phenomenal gun nonetheless. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure to rate, comment, and subscribe, and I wish you luck in getting your ogres. Remember that it's a Tiny Tina DLC weapon. You have to go into the uh, arena combat scenario, uh, the Mad Moxie arena, arena combat scenario in that DLC, and then the very la uh, last orc, you have to level him up to Duke of Orcs and then kill him, and you'll get this gun. Very hard to do that. Might as well just go online and see if anyone, uh, any one of your friends have it, and they'll just do it for you. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Remember to rate, comment, and subscribe. And as always, have a good day.